talk about this from an engineering perspective and I want to talk about it from a, how does it impact you as a DevOps engineer, platform engineer, an SRE, uh, something like that. So if you just Google this here, like do DevOps engineers uh, need to know AI? And by the way, uh, we have over 10 people on right now, which is great considering we literally just scheduled this 15 minutes prior to it starting. Uh, so thank you so much for everybody for joining. If you have questions, please pop your questions in, whether you're on, on YouTube or LinkedIn, doesn't matter. Um, so this is the big one for me. Now, again, like with when you're thinking about AI and LMs and genera, it's going to be different for each uh, team. So DevOps teams and platform engineering teams or cl and cloud teams are going to look at AI differently than data engineering teams. They're going to look at it differently than hardware engineering teams, right? Like the, the teams that are building the hardware that can support all the training and everything. They're going to look at it differently than the developers that are building the, the LLMs and fine tuning them and, and building rags around them and stuff like that. So it's always going to look a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just talking about it purely from a DevOps and platform and, and cloud and blah, blah, blah perspective. I believe that we can start to think about this as like automation 2.0 in a sense. Now you can go into it from a, all right, I'm going to use GitHub Copilot and I'm going to use the tools that are implementing Gen AI to kind of make my life a little bit easier. And that's exactly what they're doing from a DevOps perspective, platform engine, all that stuff. It's the idea of let's remove the low hanging fruit. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to touch on that in a second, but really quick, what I want to do is I want to show a little bit uh, deeper from an engineering perspective. So I want you to think about this like automation when let's say, all right, we'll, we'll take like, you know, windows sysadmins, right? When PowerShell first came out, the whole idea was instead of clicking around through a GUI or a UI, what you can do is you can now automate your tasks. Okay. You can say, Hey, I don't want to click next, next, next anymore. I just want to be able to have something do this for me, a script, right? And it could have been a two liner. It could have been a four liner really, really easy. And now we see automation from an infrastructure perspective, right? So instead of going and clicking next, next, next through a GUI or a UI to spin up a virtual machine, or instead of going through the Azure portal or the AWS portal or wherever, we can now just automate all this stuff with infrastructure as code, which is great. I want you to think about LLMs the same way, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna show this, and then I'm gonna show a little bit of code just to give everybody the idea uh, to go through this whole thing. It would take hours, so I'm gonna give the, everybody the high level. There's something called Hugging Face. Now I want you to think about Hugging Face like a package manager in a sense. So you know how like you go to Docker Hub to pull down container images, or you go to you know you use Aptitude. Let's say you're using Linux, or uh, let's say you're using Ubuntu, and you use Aptitude, which is like the app package manager, to bring down a package. Or maybe you use, you're on a Mac and you use Homebrew to bring down a package. Hugging Face is the same concept, except for models. Okay. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, when it comes to models, you have two options. You either train your own, which could be anywhere from thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to billions of dollars. Okay. Uh, real quick. I want to just, uh, do we have a question pop up? I can't see that part of the screen. Actually. You know, yeah. Know. Yeah. We do yeah. have a question, um, but it's like more, shall we just take them as we go? Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one later. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just I just moved the uh, the Streamyard thing to 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 my other screen here, so I could see the comments that were coming in. So you have a couple options again. You either train your own model, which is a lot of money, or you fine tune or create a rag for an existing model. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's say I want to take the llama model here, and I say, okay, llama is my base, right? It is the base model that contains a, a bunch of different, you know, piece of information, right? I can, like, like chat GPT, like I can ask it a question uh, and it gives me an answer. But I also want this model to be able to go and automate things for me. 
So essentially, like, let's say you you see vendors, right? And a lot of these vendors that are like, you know, we're AI enabled and blah, blah, blah. What they did was they just downloaded a model, like here, and I'm, I'm giving a high level. They downloaded a model like Llama, or you can, you know, search different models here. They download a model and then they fine tune it. All right, so what does that mean? So let's say I download this model. So now once I download this model, I am going to, <clears throat> uh is this the right one yeah i'm sorry i'm looking at the wrong bs code here okay so i download the model right and the way that i download the model is i authenticate to let's say uh, a hugging face for example i specify the model that i want to bring down and then i go ahead and i download that model so i need the tokenizer that way when i'm fine-tuning the model i can uh, essentially create data sets around that fine tuning. And then once I fine tune it with those data sets, I send it back to the model and the model is able to read the information that I gave. That's where the tokenizer comes into play. All right. And then I can also save that model. So literally everything that you see here, all these JSON configurations and this model dot safe tensors here, this is the model. All right. Now, once I download the model, I am now able to create data sets or i mean i could create data sets before even downloading the model so i have these data sets and let's say i want these data sets to uh, have the ability to look at cloud providers to see which one is giving the best performance for containerized applications right so i create that data set then what i do is i tune fine tune this existing model right and i'm using things like transformers uh, I'm using things like, you know, well, whatever language you're using to create data sets, right, and formalize those data sets. And then I'm fine tuning or creating a rag on that model that I've downloaded with the data sets. Now, all of what I just said is very high level, but that's the gist of how you create this automation 2.0 in a sense. Okay, so what I can do now is let's say I'm a DevOps engineer, a platform engineer or whatever, and I know Python, I can download models and then I can create data sets from those models and then I can fine tune the models to do whatever I want. Right. And then if we go back to what I was showing here, right, this piece, so I can fine tune models to automate repetitive tasks for me more so than I already can. Check code, right? Find bugs. I can even implement this into my monitoring and observability. So if I'm thinking about like APM, application performance monitoring, I can fine tune a model for my application specifically to ensure that it's running and performing as expected. 